Hello, welcome to Screen Talk with yours truly, and I'm Fennell Malloy. So I want to talk about the latest uh, sequel for Joker called Joker Fully Adieu. It is, at the time of this recording, playing in theaters. So the movie has gotten terrible reception from both critics and audiences. And I believe on Rotten Tomatoes, the uh, scores for both critics and the audience are on par. So yeah, things are not looking good for the latest Joker film. In fact, um, it is projected to flop at the box office and, and, and open below expectation, which I believe will be the 50 to 60 million dollar range domestically, or it could be lower than that. We'll just have to wait and see because I do not have the box office numbers as I'm recording this video. So as I was looking through the people's responses to the movie online, on Twitter specifically, I, I came across um, this article here from Screen Rant. Let me share my screen, which talks about the film essentially declining test screenings, which is a choice. So um, this was reported by Matt Bellany um, for, uh, for his uh, Puck newsletter. And I do recommend you check out uh, his podcast, The Town, which I find is fantastic if you want to learn about um, what's happening in the industry and all that stuff. So here is what he mentioned in the newsletter. Despite the risky musical element and dry courtroom sequences, untold Warners just declined to test screen Folia de to get audience feedback before Phillips locked the film. That's quite a tightrope to walk on the studio's most expensive movie of the year. And when I first uh, saw this, I'm like, yeah, that was not a good choice. So I saw the I saw the film on Monday for the I think it was dubbed like the fan event or essentially advanced screening of, of the movie. I saw an IMAX. And honestly, I was just puzzled uh, throughout uh, that movie with the choices that they made in that movie. Um, long story short, it was very disappointing as a sequel. And the choice to do a musical was unnecessary because it did not move the plot. And anyway, I felt it was just there as window dressing. So yeah, like the, the choices that the film <laughs> made here, I do not know what they were thinking here. And honestly, just reflecting now, there should not be a sequel to begin with. So I'll leave the article here uh, in the description if you guys want to read that. So with, with that news, like it kind of made me wonder, are test screenings important? So... If you're not aware of what test screenings are, essentially it's where um, a studio would host um, like a preview for select uh, people to watch uh, mainly either like a rough cut or like an unfinished version of the film and essentially get a feedback from the audience usually through like a detailed uh, questionnaire or, or it could be like um, direct feedback from the audience right after watching the movie. So, and I always wonder for test screenings, um, how people are chosen for that stuff. I don't know if people sign up for it or if it's like random, like, you know, like, like in, in the Charlie, uh, Willy Wonka and the Charlie, <laughs> the chocolate factory. Where, where where people get like a golden ticket or just chosen randomly to participate in screens. I, I, I just wonder how that goes. But I imagine you have to live in a major city to participate. I don't know, but I would love to be a part of those. I mean, but I don't think that's going to happen for me because I am based in Canada. So 
yeah, there's that. So, so yeah, it just makes me wonder, like, are test screenings important? So on one side of the fence, you could argue, yes, they are important because they could um, make or break uh, the film where essentially the, the film, filmmakers or the studio could uh, take the feedback uh, as, as valuable uh, critiques to implement in the film to make a better product. So I'm going to share with you a clip here. So Samuel Jackson, he recently did an interview um, with GQ magazine where he broke down his uh, iconic characters. And here he talks about uh, Snakes on a Plane, how... Um, how like a test screening really in influenced uh, the film overall. So here goes. They were trying to make a PG-13 movie and you can only have, you know, like one fuck or some shit like that in it. And I told them, I'm like, look, I gotta say motherfucker in this movie. It's, some, it's fucking sunk and motherfucking snakes all over this plane. And they're like, ah, oh, Sam, we just, come on. <sighs> no, it's, okay, fine, we wrap. They test the movie, test the movie, and then all of a sudden it's like, we got to do a reshoot. Cost them a bunch of money to get that motherfucker. <laughs> I have had it with these motherfuckers. Okay, better pause it for copyright. But, uh, but yeah, it just shows here with this example. Um, Samuel Jackson was right. They needed to have those uh, curse. Uh, the curse word essentially <laughs> so yeah I found yeah this this is quite like uh, fascinating and it shows like this this is a positive side to test screening because uh, when once they implemented that change um, it made for a better movie well this movie in particular I don't think it did well when it came out at the time but for sure like afterwards it developed a cult uh, following and all that stuff so I recommend yeah just uh, to check out this movie if you haven't already. Um, but also, too, on the flip side, uh, there could be a negative uh, aspect for test screenings because the feedback from the select few could be uh, limiting. So I'll just share another article here um, where Hayao Miyazaki, I guess he... Did like a conversation with uh, Pete Doctor, um, and Hayao Miyazaki, Hayao Miyazaki pretty much says that for test screenings, they're impossible for all viewers to understand a film. So essentially, he talks about why uh, Studio Ghibli they don't do test uh, screenings. So here's what he says here. He says, "No, it is impossible for all viewers to understand a film." We are the ones who take responsibility, so we can't leave it to someone who happens to be there. While Pete Doctor says, uh, he has the opposite opinion where he says, in our method, test screenings are useful. Since we are in the middle of production, we can determine that this part is not resonating at all or that the emotions we want to feel are not being felt. So we can make adjustments. It's true that when I'm listening to opinions, I sometimes let it go from right to left, but the preview, we watch it together. That way I can feel it when they are bored or when they're engrossed in the screen. And I believe that their reactions are genuine. I believe that it is our responsibility to adjust the film so that it resonates with as many people as possible while watching it. So yeah, this is like interesting. So really at the end, it, it really, it depends. Uh, it seems like for films under this, this studio system, the major studio system, I don't think they're man, I don't think they are, they have to do test screenings, uh, but, um, but they are definitely recommended like if they want the films to appeal to like a wider, audience but i guess on the flip side too if um if you're trying to make a film let's say for a specific audience which um happens more like for indie movies or for small scale movies for the most part it may not make sense to do test screenings because um 
they may or may not get um, the film overall. So, yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts on test screenings. So, yeah, test screenings could either make or break. It could be on a positive front, like with snakes on a plane, or there could be a negative um, side to that. Because um, with uh, the, the Flash movie, I believe when they did test screenings, uh, it was reported to be positive. But... It, but the movie, when it came out, I don't believe they did changes um, in terms of major changes. But when, when the movie came out, <laughs> it, it did not do well at the box office. So, yeah, like, I think there's different opinions when it comes to test screenings. Uh, I would say, for me, sure, like, I think test sc screenings can be helpful to see you know, how people would react to the movie and all that stuff. But just because, you know, people from a test screening react positive or negative does not mean it's reflective of the audience overall. So there's that. So let me know your thoughts uh, on, on test screenings. Uh, are they important? Are they not? Also, too, what you think about uh, Joker 2 sequel um, essentially not doing test screenings at all for this movie, which seems to be a grave mistake based on the responses for this movie. Let me know in the comments section. So also too, um, if you want to follow me on social media, you could uh, view my links in the description. Also too, if you want to support me in the channel, you could visit my buy me a coffee link to donate. And I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. And I hope to uh, catch you next time.